I stand for clean water. I stand for our indigenous people. I stand with Standing Rock. For the better part of a year, the hills along the Cannonball River near Cannonball, North Dakota, have been transformed into a small city, the epicenter of what is in essence a spiritual movement. 1,172 miles, the length of the proposed pipeline. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe has opposed the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline since it was first proposed in 2014. Protests began this past April with a handful of people preying on the reservation as construction proceeded. Running through four states of North and South Dakota, Iowa, and Illinois, the pipeline would also invade the sacred land of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. Four hundred and seventy thousand. The number of barrels of oil that will be transported daily throughout the completed pipeline. Since 1995, there have been over 2,000 significant accidents on oil and gas pipelines in the United States alone. An oil spill at this site would constitute not only an existential threat to the tribe's health, culture, and way of life, but the drinking water of over 18 million people provided by the Missouri River. $3.78 billion, the estimated cost of the pipeline. Only when the last tree has been cut down, the last fish been caught, and the last stream be poisoned, will we realize we cannot eat money. Sioux, Lakota, Papa, Hoopa Valley, Dakota, Cherokee, over 300 tribal nations that oppose the DAPL have pledged to support the Standing Rock Sioux Nation. A gathering of unprecedented mobilization Indigenous tribes have come together in the largest native gathering in the United States since the Battle of Little Bighorn in 1876. I have not seen this kind of gathering uh, and bring it in support. I have never seen it in my entire life. Chase Iron Eyes of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe reminds us, we don't have energy security unless we have water security. We don't have food security unless we have water security. We don't have national security unless we have water security. The pipeline is not only going through our country's land, but our native homeland. The indigenous people, however highly exploited, are at the forefront of this fight, focused for water and for the prophecy of their ancestors as the final barrier of the pipeline going through the water. In July 2010, at least 800,000 gallons of crude oil spilled into the Kalamazoo River near Marshall, Michigan. It was one of the largest inland oil spills in U.S. history and the costliest. Almost 5,000 acres of wetland habitat was inundated with oil. Hundreds of animals were killed. Thousands more were recovered, cleaned, and released. Full recovery could take decades. DAPL is an issue for all humanity, not just native life. Sovereignty rights for Native Americans have been infringed upon with the invasion of their own property in violation of Native land treaty rights dating back to 1851 and 1868, signed by the U.S. government. And the betrayal does not end here. If the Army Corps of Engineers permits the completion of the pipeline under the Missouri River, acts of clean water, national historic protection, and national environmental policy will be invaded. Water is life. You gotta take care of the land. You gotta take care of the land. Take care of the water. You gotta take care of the air. You gotta take care of the soil. This pipeline is destroying places that can never be replaced. This land belongs to the earth. We are only caretakers. We're caretakers of the earth. And it'll be catastrophic danger happening. We know how precious that water is. We know that we must stand for the water. Many with Tony, we say water of life. So every time we drink water, we remind ourselves how important the water is. Don't you do that? You will now. Another issue that has arisen time and again is the right of Native Americans to access their sacred places for worship. Before white settlers came to the continent, 
Native American life was free of European influences, and Native Americans lived simply off the land. Year after year, sacred landscapes that are integral to the exercise of Native religions are being destroyed or are under threat by development, pollution, recreation, vandalism, or other public and private actions. There is no effective comprehensive policy to preserve and protect sacred places and Native Americans' rights to access them. The public needs to understand that the tenets of traditional Native religions require the protection of the physical integrity of these sacred places. Tribal nations and Native people have fundamental spiritual duties of care and protection. These duties are a part of Native traditional religions and therefore are an integral part of the lives of tribal people. They are indispensable and irreplaceable. Our true founding fathers. The indigenous population of the U.S. has been historically marginalized. Despite centuries of oppression, mass killing and displacement, there has been little progress in the sovereignty and protection of indigenous tribes. This fight is not only environmental, but a continuation of a battle tribes have been waging against colonialism over 500 years. This is the land our ancestors are from. This is the land where our ancestors dreamed of our existence, of our songs, and of our future lives. And in defense of those dreams, in defense of our ancestors, we stand strong. We have burial grounds there, there's animals there, there's just, you know, all these species, endangered species. We're gonna stop it right now. We're here and we'll remain until this issue is, is, is resolved. But this is ongoing for us as as uh, indigenous Native Americans in this country. As long as we have a land base, we're going to be in struggle. We're not really sovereign. Sovereign is an imagination that they want us to, like, think. You guys are sovereign. But really, when it comes down to it, we have to go and get the okay to the government still. And most of the time, when it's in development, they shut us down. We needed, we needed Standing Rock. And the American Indian Movement needed it. Why didn't this happen mm -hmm. years ago? Why, why didn't we as Native people band together before like this? But it seems to me that need was needed U.S.-wide. And now I have that faith in my comrades and my people and the people I've met out here, people of like mind. And the people here are beautiful. The people here are were called through indigenous ways, but we also have our allies here as well. You know, people who care about this earth. And that's something that shocks me the most is that we have no other agenda here. We have no other agenda besides keeping that water oil free. That's it. Nonviolent direct action is connected to our indigenous values of prayer. And and we were told in ceremonies that we need to we, that we needed to continue to do what we do founded in our indigenous values and founded in nonviolence and founded in prayer. That if we stay nonviolent and we stay prayerful, that we will win. Water protectors at Standing Rock inspire us with traditional Native American values from peaceful protest to patience, spirituality, mutualism, community, and a kinship for our Mother Earth. Which we have agreed. And yet these peaceful protesters with their hands held open are met with police force, pepper spray, tear gas, dogs, and rubber bullets as they are thrown into jail. Society, you're a crazy breed. I hope you're not lonely. You come out here with batons, right? To protect the sacredness of Mother Earth. We stand strong to defend our rights as indigenous peoples. We stand strong to defend our territorial treaty rights as we're checking shot going to Ayatollah. That's the stand that we make. We continue to stand by that. This, this movement that you see before us is, is not a movement of hate, but just a movement of undying love for our land and our people in the water. John Grimm, a senior lecturer and research scholar at FNES and an expert in Native American religions, acknowledges that religion for the indigenous tribes is much more a life way. Life ways are the values that pervade the way natives interact with the world, with one another, Grimm tells us. Men out here 
for four months now. Hope you're you know, not lonely. Through this many moons ago, many winters Without ago. You know, this is how our ancestors lived. So, you know, we're not going to give up easily, and we're not going to we're not going to give up on this war between us and the Napa workers. Stand in reciprocity to deal with the need to bring to bear one's values on the world. The Lakota people tell us, Mitakuye Oyase. When you enter into a ceremony, especially a sweat lodge, it's entirely appropriate for a Lakota person to say, Mitakuye Oyase. As if to say, everything I have experienced in this ceremonial moment is in relationship to all my relatives. You are standing on the ground of our ancestors! We're asking you There's to leave! No we are asking you to leave! We will not to leave! When you start to leave, we will go back across the bridge! We will go back across the bridge! You are Dreams for every moment you make. You are dancing to our families! It's a simple request! It's a simple request! We are asking you to leave! We are asking you to leave! To our relatives on top of the hill! To our relatives on top of the hill! You see it as the joining of two worlds. Just do it. No win is ever permanent, but we can rejoice today because together we created a greater justice in the world. We opened the door to heal the wounds sustained by our indigenous people. But what will you do tomorrow?